Hello and welcome to my top 10 of Chris Chibnall episodes. Which, surprisingly enough, is a video of me detailing what I thought is the top 10 Chris Chibnall episodes of Doctor Who. I know. Now, a quick caveat to this. With a couple of these, Chris Chibnall hasn't actually written them. But from what we know about his process, he used a writer's room. Chris Chibnall was just generally involved a lot within the show as he was showrunner. And just his whole era is his era. But obviously, to make it in this list, it either has to be part of the Chris Chibnall era, or he has to have written it. Which is why number one might be a bit strange. Because first on this list, we have Dinosaurs on a Spaceship. Yep, this episode from Series 7A was written by Chris Chibnall, so I can include it. So I'm going in chronological order, I'm not actually, you know, it's just kind of just 10 of Chris Chibnall's best. Hope that doesn't irritate you. If, if it really does, I can rank them in the comments for you, if, if you really care that much. One of Chris Chibnall's best things is he really did understand Eleven, Rory and Amy. That's why The Power of Three was also very close to making this list, which Chris Chibnall also wrote. Dinosaurs on a Spaceship with the inclusion of Rory's dad is just such a fun episode. David Bradley makes for an interesting villain. Got some really cool side characters going on here. It's episodes like this that make 7A a really underrated little bit of a season, even though 7B is pretty awful. Episode that allows itself to be fun, yet very sci-fi Doctor Who, and it's just really enjoyable from start to finish. So shout out to The Power of Three, it genuinely is good, apart from that pretty bad last 10 minutes. Next up, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Recently we've gone through quite a good trend, I'd say in the modern era in general, we've introduced our Doctors really well. The Woman Who Fell to Earth is no exception. This episode, again, is a lot of fun, but it has- it makes some stylistic choices that I almost wish the Chris Chimmel era had kind of kept up. It allows itself to be a bit darker and a bit different. Unfortunately, this episode does have a lot of things that it sets up that then just, like, kind of don't really get paid off, really. But a lot of, like, the character setups here and a lot of things that are done in that way, they're all really interesting. A lot of stuff with Graham and Grace, it works. Next up, we've got to talk Rosa. If I was ranking these, Rosa really would be up there. Telling this really, this story that needed to be told. Looking at history in this beautiful way, with fantastic performances, and then really bringing it back to our characters. Seeing Graham's reactions, it's just, it's really beautiful stuff. Yes, I probably would have liked its villain to have a little bit more depth, but overall that's not the focus here. The focus is the beautiful story it's telling, and it tells it really well. Next up, Kablam. Kablam is an absolutely fantastic episode and I disrespect anyone who disagrees. I love it when Doctor Who can kind of make like outer universe parallels to what goes on in our universe, this episode working really well with Amazon. It manages to have what a fantastic side cast of characters, really enjoyable. Lee Mack, fantastic, I love yous. Overall, this is just a story with a lot of references, a lot of fun. In fact, that's really what you explain it as. It's fantastic sci-fi fun, and I found Kablam, as part of the Chibnall era, one of the most enjoyable and re-watchable. Kablam is a lot of fun. If you haven't watched Kablam in a while, I would genuinely check it back out. Next up, Spyfall. We'll go parts one and two, but one was mainly the great one. I think, again, I love it when Doctor Who allows itself to kind of, like, take on different tones while still mainly being a sci-fi show. It's like Marvel have done with Captain America, like the Winter Soldier being like a spy thing, for example, and Ant-Man being a heist film. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know why I'm explaining it so much. Allowing Doctor Who to have a little bit of a fun spy twist for a bit is really cool. Plus, Spyfall gets a lot of props for the Master. Sash Juan is absolutely fantastic in the role. Plus, the reveal at the end of part one is just fantastic from start to finish. I'll always praise it. Next up, Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror. Now, there is a genuine reason why I think these more fun, lighter, really science fiction based episodes work. Unfortunately, the way our companions ended up being set up, episodes that try to give them depth never end up working particularly well. They never end up coming across truthful. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a massive fan of Can You Hear Me, for example. But I think with episodes like this, having fun side characters that interact with one big group and just having a really good, fun sci-fi adventure feels like classic Doctor Who, but also feels like it works best with the fam as a dynamic. Nikola Tesla's Night of Terror, being specific, is just fantastic. 
It just allows itself to have a lot of fun, tell a really cool science fiction story, and I really enjoy it. Now next up, we've got Fugitive the Jadoon. Now this one might change on a rewatch, because I feel like so much of what was exciting about this episode never really came to pass. Elements of the Ruth Doctor in the first settings up of like the Timeless Child, and Captain Jack being back, all of these elements really, really cool. I literally remember exactly what I was doing, watching this, my reactions, everything. It was such, it felt like event telly. And that's why I've got to put it on this list, because first time watching, that was an episode that made me feel so many things. And obviously nothing was ever really done with the Ruth Doctor, Timeless Child didn't go very well, and we're now never allowed Captain Jack back again in Doctor Who, which is a lot of fun. So overall, this episode was kind of like the best, coolest, most exciting setup episode that then just fell flat. So I don't I don't know. I don't actually know if this episode will hold up on a rewatch. But it was still it was still good. It was still good. And my experience at the time with it definitely puts it on this list. Next up, I'm kind of gonna pair The Haunting of Via Diodati and Ascension of the Cybermen. Because both of them were really, really cool. As I've discussed quite a few times in this channel, pairing up the Master and the Cybermen has got incredibly dull incredibly quickly, and has happened now four times over the last few years. And I actually think adding the Master in the Timeless Children really didn't work, maybe because of the reveal you had to, but just giving the Cybermen, you know, like, allowing them to just be cool and scary on their own in both the previous two episodes really, really worked. Haunting as much more of kind of like your classic like solo villain episode, really just allowing one of these characters to be really scary and that will always be effective. Then surprisingly doing a pretty good job in Ascension of really making a group of Cybermen scary. That hasn't really happened since Age of Steel. I don't want this video again to become timeless child bashing because that is incredibly dull. These are classic villains that just work so well and deserve the respect. Also, during recording this, I've forgotten that I didn't add resolution uh, of, the, of, uh, of the Daleks. Speaking of the Cybermen, I think of Daleks. That was, that was good too. That was good too. That probably would have made this list. I'm not sure what it have kicked out, but you know. Shout out resolution of the Daleks. That, was, that, that wasn't bad. Now for this point, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Because as you'll know, Flux didn't really work very well for me. The War of the Sontarans and Village of Angels are both absolutely fantastic. I don't really actually use the Flux storyline that much, and I think that's to their benefits. Instead, they tell very interesting standalone stories that occasionally link with the Flux aspect, and they work very well. In both of these, the Sontarans and the Angels are just handled really, really well. The Sontarans, we just hadn't seen them in a long time, so just seeing them back is just really enjoyable. And then with the Angels, I reckon that's like the scariest and most interesting they've been, maybe even since Blink. Then again, I do enjoy all Weeping Angel episodes, and that was no exception. And number 10, Power of the Doctor. Now I have to admit, I could do a lot of explaining as to why Power of the Doctor is here. Instead, you can just watch my review here. That'd make a lot more sense. It's big and it's long and it's podcasty, so if you want Power of the Doctor thoughts, click it, honestly.